So my final step of getting this thing completely assembled and ready to go would be to test it. And typically for me, I just put water in it uh, and test it. However, you do have to use some caution if you're gonna do that because this is obviously something that's gonna be outside in the cold. And by putting water in it, you can damage it. So you gotta make sure if you do that, that you drain it and you get all the water back out of it. So we'll, we'll put some water in here. We're gonna spray a couple patterns onto the ground so that you can get an idea of what that looks like with the nozzle being adjusted up and down. And then lastly, with the boom and what, what that looks like is you can have a nice squirt gun out of that. I put some water in it now and I'm ready to test it. So along with that, I brought some tools along because I do notice right away, I got a little bit of a leak here. So how do I fix that? Uh, well, you can start with something simple, obviously, which is to verify that this is tight. If it is tight, then we might have to put some, some tape on it to just make sure that it doesn't keep leaking like that. And it is pretty tight. Give it a little bit extra there. And we'll just give this a try and see if it'll leak yet. And we got a, just a little dribble off of it yet. So the right thing to do here, we would take that fitting apart, put a little tape on it, uh, just sealant. If you have that too, that would be fine. And then put it back together. Sometimes those sealants have to dry. The tape is kind of nice because you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and the front of the machine, kind of the similar thing here. Make sure that everything is tight. This thing does come off. This is actually like threaded. So you want to just tighten that up, make sure it's good to go. Uh, we did talk a little bit about the hose fittings already. Just make sure they're all the way on and then make sure to give these a squeeze. You can use a pliers. Just don't go crazy. I think other than that, we're ready to do our test. So maybe we'll use the boom here first. And I can kind of show you on the side what the spray pattern looks like for that. So we're on boom back here. Maybe I'll spin this around so you can see that first. So we're on the boom, which is this setting on the side. And then we just flip this to on and it's obviously not gonna spray until I pull the trigger, right? So you heard the pump run, that's normal. So it's building up pressure in the system. And then when I squeeze the trigger, we're gonna get fluid to come out. Okay, and you can do this as like a stream, you know? So the, the more you close it off, you're gonna have a, just a real tight fan. It actually looks like a little circle. You can see that on the floor. Or you get more of a spray, or you can go right down to a stream, okay? Those are your options with the spray boom here. Um, it does put out a lot of material. So if you need to do sidewalks, um, or up close to the building is what I'm referring to, or maybe you've got a situation where the steps are much easier to do rather than trying to get this to go down the steps. Smart idea. So this works great for that or up close tight to a building. All right, we'll turn that off, flip this off, and now we'll transition to the sprayer. So on the front side of the machine, all right, we're just gonna flip this over, okay? And you can see right, I have a little squirt on the floor. And before I move forward here, I'm gonna just adjust this so that we're gonna put it all the way down so you can kind of get an idea what all the way down is gonna look like. Okay, so now we're all the way down and I'm gonna just grab a tape measure here and we're gonna just hit this on real quick. And now we just wanna measure our pattern here, right? So now we can get an idea how far out are we. So right now we're at 60 inches, we're at five feet, okay? That's pretty wide already, just the way that is. Uh, but let's, let's try it the other way now too. Obviously our concentrated area was about between the tires here, about here to here, which was about three feet, right? So now let's raise that guy back up. Okay, we'll move forward a little bit here. I'm gonna move over just a little so we got that little spray and we'll do the same thing. So now we got it all the way up, okay? And now you can kind of see what we got there, which is we're at about six feet now. So we gained about a foot. And I ran it a little bit longer there just to get a little some more puddle. Uh, but I would say our spray width is pretty heavy within about four feet. So that's, Kind of what you're looking at here, and we'll just kind of do a little pass through in the shop, 
before we take it outside and spray some brine. So right now I have it all the way up, which if I were gonna be spraying sidewalks, I'd probably select about in the middle, uh, depending upon what size the sidewalk is. So I'm just figuring out about a five foot sidewalk and set it right about in the middle, which is about where I had it when I started, but that's because I've set a few of these up before. And again, that would just be determined by how far do you want it to spray out? Do you have a pretty wide sidewalk uh, or is it a narrower sidewalk? The ability to adjust it also is great because obviously if you can keep most of this on the surface, it also is helping with not spraying it on the grass. All right, so let's just kind of give a little walk forward here and kind of get an idea. And the next question, of course, I get is how much is this gonna cover? Like how far do I get to, to put this down you know, on sidewalks? The answer is it all just depends because of course you saw how slow I was walking there and now I have very good coverage, I would call this. This is like almost too much, right? So we have a lot of water at, the, at this point. That's not necessarily what we want. We want it to be wet, but it does not have to be a puddle by any means. So. How fast you go with the machine is obviously going to be determined how far you can go with this. You don't want to just completely saturate the ground. All right, so we transitioned to outside now and I charged it overnight. So we've got a full battery. So you always want to make sure that you're doing that. Um, try not to put more brine in here than what you need. Most of the time what I see or I'm doing is lifting this with somebody else. So the sprayer itself weighs 70 pounds and it holds 12 gallons. And when you're doing brine, brine roughly weighs about 11 pounds per gallon. So if you do the math, that's 132 pounds worth of brine, 70 pounds for the machine. It adds up quick. You're almost at 200 something pounds. So you need to be thinking about that when you're trying to lift this in and out of wherever you're unloading it and loading it onto. All right, so now we're gonna just this sidewalk's a little bit wet already, but we're going to just spray down some material and then um, just kind of see how it works. So typically what I'll do is I'll come all the way up to the sidewalk here at the beginning of the house or, or business and then just turn it on and start spraying and you kind of see, you just want to kind of cover your sidewalk and you can walk faster, you can walk slower. Some of it will just depend upon what you're comfortable with. Most of the time you might even be doing this on dry pavement. So it's not like it's slippery or icy or anything like that. All right, so with like an area like this, I'm gonna just turn it on and I won't be able to get everything. Then I'll switch over to the boom and fire it back up. Adjust the tip here a little. Just get the areas I didn't get. Done. So a few things, if you're having any type of issues, there are two things that potentially can happen. One would be is your filter inside. So inside the tank, there's a little filter. You might wanna just go ahead and double check, and make sure that the filter didn't somehow get plugged up. Sometimes, especially when there's new, there can be a little bit of material in there from the tank itself when they made it. So that's something, you know, like usually when I'm doing this, I drain that all back out to try to give it a flush. Okay. Lastly is going to be the tip itself. So when you are dealing with the tip, again, you just turn it. And if for some reason this tip is plugged up, you're just going to go ahead and usually I just rinse it out with warm water and that usually solves the problem if, if that's it at all. Put it back in and you're good to go. Lastly, you're going to want to just, when you're finished for the day, make sure again that you drain the tank. Obviously we're dealing with liquid and that can freeze. Uh, so take your tank and dump it back out or pump it out if you want to try to put it back in your tank. Uh, but make sure it gets emptied out so that there's no solution in it because obviously the pump or the lines could potentially freeze and break. So as you can see, the SS120 is a very valuable tool to add to your snow fighting fleet. Um, you know, and lastly, it really helps you just can introduce to brine, you know, in an environment like this where there's 
not a lot that you can do wrong, so to say. And uh, uh, you, you can see that there's plenty of snow in the area here that's going to melt and go back onto the concrete. It just really helps you to start to learn. And then you can move on to some of those bigger pieces of equipment, you know, the, the big tanks, the back of the trucks and so forth.